Happiness Creatives presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings, I hope and trust. I find you all, my dear friends, and welcome to yet another installment of MS Creatives. It's the month of March, and we celebrate the achievements of women. I invite you to the book of Judges, chapter 4. The verse is 1, where we are going to find two women setting themselves apart, named Deborah and Jael. We begin at verse number one and it reads as follows. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazo, the captain of whose army was Sisera, who dwelt in Harosheth of the nations. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron, and for 20 years, he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, judged Israel at that time. Let us pause for a moment of prayer. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, we are about to go into thy word, O Father. It is our prayer that we may hear you speak to us. Should you choose to speak to us through women, may your will be done. Prepare our hearts and our ears to receive your word in spite of where we receive it from. May you speak to our mothers and sisters that you have a great and honorable work for them to discharge. They hold the power in their hands to do as the Lord bids. Uh, dear Father, may you quicken their steps and above all sharpen their minds. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen. As the custom is, we raise just our usual five points. And at point number one, we want to look at God's word coming through a woman or coming through women. Many men have a problem receiving the word of the, of the Lord because it has come to them through a female vessel, through a lady, through a woman, through a sister in the faith. I want to challenge you as we go through this enterprise, through this um, exercise to say in your enterprise, you want to say, does the Lord want us to be led by a female CEO? So be it. Does the Lord want to give us counsel through a lady? So be it. As the Lord speaks, we should rise up and do as he bids. And as the Bible records, this is what happened. Uh, this lady Deborah calls upon or summons Barak. Barak must have been a captain of the army. And uh, she says unto Barak, you are to take 10,000 men. From the, from the tribes of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. You are to go out and attack the man Sisera and captain of Jabin, and you shall do so in the plains of Kadesh. And the man having received this word, the Bible says at point number two, uh, and at verse number eight particularly, he says, I, I have a challenge. I will go any day as long as you go with me. But if you will not go with me, I am reluctant to carry out the Lord's instruction. And the woman says, indeed, I will go with you. And before we leave this uh, interaction, I want to raise point number two. There are women who add value, value to those whom they lead. They inspire confidence. As you go out to lead as a woman of faith, be a woman who's going to inspire confidence and subordinates. When you speak the word of the Lord, speak it with confidence that people are going to say, we need your presence to accompany us, just like Moses who said, we will not rise up from this place unless the presence of the Lord goes with us. The man Barak says, I will not rise up until and unless I am accompanied by your presence. And Deborah says, I will definitely come with you. But as I come with you, there is point number three. This is what is going to happen. And we find it at verse number nine. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the journey that you shall take shall not be to your honor. It shall not be for your honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah rose and went with Barak to Kadesh. You know, they are what we, are, we commonly refer to as medals of honor. You know, these medals of honor many a time are given to men who distinguish themselves. And Deborah says, as you have insisted on me going with you, I shall go with you to battle. In spite of being your judge, your prophet, and being a woman, because you have insisted that I accompany you, this particular trajectory that we are on 
is going to result in honor being bestowed upon a woman. And I want to challenge women out there and say, you can still do the honorable thing. God can still use you mightily to do the honorable thing like Jael. God has that power and he doesn't discriminate on grounds of gender. God still says, my daughter, you can be the honorable one and distinguish yourself amongst many. And at point number four, as we begin this exercise, what happens here? We'll find that the Lady Jael at point number four upholds family ties over political ties. Go back to Judges 14 and you'll find this at verse 17. What happened here is that the family of Hobab had a peace treaty, had an agreement with the king Jabin. They were political ties. So this particular place, Kadesh, where the, 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 the battle was going on, is the place where Barak and Deborah attacked Sisera. Sisera, the one who was in charge of the 900 chariots of iron, as they attacked him, he then ran off as his men began to fall one by one. And he runs towards the family of Hobab. Who was Hobab? Hobab was the father-in-law of Moses. And he had a son by the name Heber. Heber was married to Jael. So then, if Hobab was the father-in-law of Moses, Heber became an uncle of the likes of Geshom. He was an uncle to the Israelites. And his wife, Jaya, would have been an aunt to the Israelites. And therefore, what comes into life, into existence here, is a family tie, where they are tied by blood as in-laws, marital status that has resulted in a family relationship. Now, as this man runs to Hobab's territory, he is running to a place of refuge on political grounds only to get there. And Jael comes out and meets him, invites him into her tent. And the man goes in and he says, finally, I find a place of refuge. As he gets there, he asks for one thing, water to drink. Jael will not only offer him water to drink, but she goes on to offer him milk and a rug. As he is sleeping, he covers him she covers him, pardon me, she covers him with a rug. The man is sound asleep. And this brings us to point number five. Having chosen family ties over political ties, she pulls out a pen, I mean a tent peg and drives it through his temple and nails or pins this man to the ground. And Sisera died on the spot. As Barak comes at the foot of his heels, running after the man, he meets Jael who tells him, the man is no more. The man is the former. He is dealt with. He is dead. This was a woman of courage. This was a woman who distinguished herself. And of the five things that I wish to speak unto the women of our churches, say unto the women in our homes as point number one, God can still speak through you. Listen out for his word and share it to those you minister to. Whether you're in the workplace, in the home, or in the faith space, speak for God. And at point number two, add value to a point that people would rather have you around them as they do all the things that matter to them. At point number three, you can still be a woman of honor. You can distinguish yourself and receive the accolade in spite of your gender. Do so and set yourself apart. At point number four, you want to be an upholder of family ties. Take care of those who are related to you. The nucleus family, take care of your husband. Take care of your loved ones. Take care of your children. Take care of your nephews. Take care of your nieces. Take care of your in-laws. That's what will set you apart. And at point number five, be a woman of courage. Be a woman who will do the unthinkable and what has not been done. Set yourself apart, for that is God's plan for you and over your life. Permission to pray with you briefly. Dear Father, we have had you speak to us through your word. These five points, may you place them in our hearts safely. And above all, translate them to our minds for practice and action throughout this week until we meet again on the signs of the times on Friday. Blessings and peace be unto you. Amen.